So the paper that I'm working on is Claire Fontaine Pastel Mat, and this is my favorite kind of paper to work with when I'm working with pastels. There's pretty much no other paper like it on the market. So a lot of people ask me what cheaper paper they can use when they're practicing with pastels. And to be honest, I really wouldn't save money on your paper choice. I would save money on your pastels, for example. So I definitely recommend getting the pastel mat to start with, but if you need to save money somewhere, just get a smaller set of pastels and mix your colors instead. So I'm starting out with my pan pastels and I'm working on the sky first. So I'm gonna work from the back to the front. And this is kind of a sunset, like a foggy landscape kind of scene. So there's a lot of purples and oranges and pinks in there. So I've just started out by blocking in those kind of purple colors towards the outside and then a bit more of those pinky kind of peachy orange colors towards the sun. And then I'm just going to go over it like I'm doing now with the white pan pastel just to soften everything out and calm it down a little bit. Then I'm going to come through with another layer of color and I'm pretty much going to use very similar colors to what I used on the first layer there. So I'm using the pan pastels to do most of the layering with this and then I'll go through with the pastel pencils on top just to get in some of those finer details. Here I'm using an orange pastel pencil just to help brighten up that area because I didn't get out an orange pan pastel so it was just easier to use that pastel pencil there. But one of the main problems that I see people have with pan pastel when they're first starting out is that they the tools that they're using are getting damaged really quickly and it's kind of expensive to replace these tools. So the tools that you use to apply the pan pastels are called soft tools. These tools are really fantastic. They pick up the pan pastel really well and then lay them down quite well. The alternative that people use are makeup brushes and I honestly just don't think that they do the same thing. Yeah, they just don't work as well as the soft tools. But the number one problem that people have is that the thin ones that go on these knife covers kind of wear away quite quickly because of how thin they are. And the number one reason why they wear away so quickly is because people are pressing too hard with them. So when you come into your paper and you apply that pastel from your pan, a lot of the pastel is going to come off of the tool on the first stroke and then as you continue your strokes it will stop coming off of your tool and a lot of people at this point tend to press harder to try and get more pastel to come off of their tool when you actually need to go back into your pan when your color starts to run out grab more pastel and then apply it to your drawing again don't try and press harder to get more pastel to come off of your tool because that is going to damage your tool really quickly. So here you can see I've switched to a smaller tool. It kind of looks like an eyeshadow tool, but it's, it's definitely a soft tool. It's just a different kind of shape. And I really like these ones because it helps you be able to get into smaller areas. So um, I use these if I'm doing smaller pieces or if I'm working on animals and things like that, or just smaller areas amongst the drawing that I'm doing. So there's a variety of different shapes and sizes of the soft tools that you can choose from. And you can see in my base layer, I'm blocking in some really kind of vibrant colors here. And you can see judging by the finished drawing that I've got a photo of in the corner there that the colors are not gonna stay that vibrant. But when I'm doing my base layer of pan pastels, I tend to choose more vibrant and saturated colors because I know that when I start to add more layers, it's going to dull down quite a bit and these colors will just subtly show through in the end result. So that's why I've started out with those brighter colors because I know that it's gonna get dulled down quite a bit. And another thing when you're working with pastel is to make sure that you don't fill up the tooth of the paper too quickly. So when you know that you're gonna be coming over the top with pastel pencils, especially if you're working on things like animals or portraits or things like that, where you know that you're gonna have a lot of layers of pastel pencil on top, you want to make sure that the base layers that you add are not filling up the tooth of the paper too quick. And what I mean by the tooth is that basically every paper that you work on has these little grooves that are kind of like hills and valleys. So your pastel gets caught on the top of the hills and then deposits into the valleys. And once your valleys become level with the top of the hills, that's when you've got a really smooth surface that is too slick for your pastel pencils to go on top of because there's nothing for them to catch onto anymore. 
if you fill up the tooth of the paper too early on, you'll find that you just won't be able to add any pastel on top. So when I'm doing my base layers, there's quite a lot of the paper showing through. So you can see on that little bit of the foreground there, how much of that paper is actually showing through there. And that's totally normal. You want that amount of paper to show through in your base layer to make sure that you're not adding too much pastel too quickly. And that's the great thing about using pan pastels is that you can control how much pastel you lay down. Whereas if you're using a pastel stick, for example, it's very, very hard to control how much pastel you're laying down and very hard to get it kind of even. And once I've got a layer of pastel down, I actually like to come through with a cotton tip and blend everything out. So you can see me do that here. This is just going to smooth out all of the colors and help them transition into each other. But it's also going to help push that pastel into the tooth of the paper a little bit more as well, which really does help with that layering process. For this piece, I actually went with a slightly different color scheme than what the reference photo, like the original reference photo had. So I actually edited my photo to include a few more pinks and purples and kind of blues. The original reference photo was kind of more like neutral colors and almost like a brown beige kind of color. And I wanted to include more of those pinks and purples. So I edited it to include that so that when I do my drawing, it's a little bit easier to visualize the colors that I want to put in there. But I usually hype up the saturation and change the colors on every piece that I do anyway. So I like to, most of the time I like to add in a lot of those blues and purples. You can change the colors to whatever you like. So for example, if you wanted to draw like a blue elephant, you can totally do that as long as your values are correct. So having your shadows dark enough and your highlights light enough and getting your proportions correct, those things are what's going to make it look realistic and natural. And the color choices that you use are really not that important. A lot of people seem to put a lot of focus on the color choices when in fact that's really, it doesn't really matter at all. So if you look at my artwork and you look at the reference photos that I actually use, barely any of them have the same colors as the reference photo, but they still look realistic because I have my values and proportions correct. So you could draw your elephant blue if you want to, and it's going to look realistic. It's just going to look like it's in a slightly different lighting as long as your values and proportions are correct. Another thing that people put a lot of emphasis on is the amount of detail. So people seem to think that if they had the perfect colors or add hundreds of hours worth of detail to their drawings, that's what's going to make it look realistic. And that's really not what you need to focus on. A good example of both of these actually is if you go to a museum or an art gallery and you look at those beautiful realistic paintings from a normal viewing distance, they look like there's so much detail and the colors are so accurate. But when you get up close, all you can see is just a mismatch of colors and brush strokes and there's really not that much detail there and the colors are not really what they seem from further away. So I try to use that as an example when people are asking me what's the perfect color to use or how much detail do I need to put in. For me, if I step back from my artwork and look at it from a normal viewing distance and I can't see that detail that I'm adding, then it probably doesn't need to be there. If you don't know if you have enough detail there, when you step back and you look at it and you can't see what kind of texture that area is supposed to be, you may need to go back and add a little bit of detail to determine kind of what texture that area of your artwork should look like. And then take another step back and see if it looks correct from a normal viewing distance again. So you can add as much detail as you like, but I'd rather spend, you know, three hours on a piece of artwork and then move on to the next one. I don't want to spend 20, 30, 50, 100 hours on my artwork because I honestly just, I will get bored doing that. And I know that a lot of you guys do as well. And not only do I get bored by spending that much time, I end up rushing through it and it ends up looking worse that way. So by focusing on my proportions and values rather than my color choices and my details, it means that I'm focusing on the main things that are going to help make my artwork look more realistic. And I also really love being able to see the brush strokes or the pencil strokes or the color choices and the textures. And I don't know, I guess I just like to be able to see a bit of that artist style in their artwork. I don't want to just have it look like a replica of a photograph. I want to be able to see those different colors that they used and 
the textures that they've included in there that aren't necessarily in a photograph. It always just looks so much more interesting to me personally. So you don't need to have super fine details is the point that I'm trying to make there. So this landscape was quite an easy, quick piece to do. But if you'd like to know how to create more complicated pieces with pastel, I have a tutorial in the top corner there that will be useful for you. So click on that and I'll see you over there.